uh, welcome to Dr. Mohanty's uh, modeling and simulation channel. Today on demand, we are going to have uh, another lecture on salt affected soils. So when I say salt affected soils, it means that soils are affected by soluble salts and that salts, that salts could be, you know, chloride, carbonate, bicarbonate, sulfate of sodium, potassium, uh, sorry, sodium, calcium, magnesium, you know. So when I talk about salt affected soils and you have to carefully see that, you know, some data and some values will be there. So we have, you have to remember, you know, very carefully. So I'll give some data on what, is, um, what are those salt affected soils, what is the area and extent of salt affected soils in the world. Around 900 million hectares of land is uh, salt affected in the world. And in India, out of 329 million hectares, around 6.74 million hectares soils are salt affected. That means it's both saline and alkali soils we're talking about. So we'll go for that classification also. So uh, when you talk about saline and alka alkaline or alkali soils, so um, we talk about soil salinity, you know, and you know, um, what is soil salinity or salt or saline soils? Uh, these are, you know, the soils having, uh, you know, concentration of soluble salts are more near the surface soil horizon. And this is the major, con you know, concern worldwide as well as having social consequences in terms of, you know, management and agriculture. So, what are those nature of you know why why these things happen? What is the nature or primary soil salinity? How um, the salinity occurs? So you have to remember that the first thing is the weathering of parent materials. You know, you can say the accumulation of salt over a longer period of time in the soil or groundwater, which is generally caused, you know, two natural processes and. Uh, First is weathering of parent materials containing soluble salts, which break down rocks and release of soluble salts of various types, mainly chlorides of sodium, calcium, magnesium, and to a lesser extent, sulfates and carbonates. And sodium chloride is predominant soluble salts in saline. So you remember that sodium chloride, because when we talk about saline salts and alkali salts, so saline salts, soluble salts at the surface, alkali salts mostly, sodium but that sodium bicarbonate and uh, and uh, you know um, and sodium bicarbonate carbonate but in saline salts it is a sodium chloride that is dominant or predominant salt that you find in saline salts and second is you know uh, ingression or inundation of salt in the coastal area due to Sea water or deposition of oceanic salt carried by wind or rain forms uh, the second cause actually. So ocean salts carried inland and by wind are deposited by rainfall and are mainly the sodium chloride. So these two the natural factors that causes you know development of saline soils, both parent materials and oceanic deposits. So these are two. And um, I talked about you know bit of Indian saline soil, uh, Indian salt affected soils. As I mentioned, it's 6.74 million hectares, both saline and alkali soils. But that is the primary source of soil salinity. What are the secondary source of soil salinity? Is the you know salinity occurs through I mean, human induced processes. That means human intervention due to our own management practices and the way we manage the. Um, land and that results you know accumulation of dissolved salts in the in the soil water and to an extent that inhibits crop growth and uh, that second this is called secondary salinization and this results you know from human activities and the changes the hydrologic balance of the soil between water applied it's because from the irrigation water but because when you apply poor quality irrigation water that's you know uh, having more soluble salts in them definitely that also causes soil salinity so sources that causes accumulation of salts what are those sources that causes and causes of accumulation of salt one is capillary rise from the subsoil sub, 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 uh, subsoil 
salt beds if subsoil having soil and due to capillarize the salt from the subsoil may come to the surface soil and and are uh, from the shallow brackish water groundwater is brackish or salty groundwater then definitely during summer when there is you know uh, the evaporation occurs at the soil surface then probably you know large amount of soluble salts may come to the surface to capillarize and second is indiscrimination use of you know waters of different qualities that means i talked about that the, if you are having poor quality irrigation water already it is saline water and you are going to use that for irrigation purpose that means you are adding saline water to the soil surface when evaporation occurs then it, the salt gets dried and it is forms a crust or maybe thin layer of white salt accumulation at the surface and weathering of rocks and salts bring uh, brought down from the upstream to the plain of rivers and subsequent deposit along the alluvial materials also this is one cause you know refer bed alluvium then inundation of sea water along the coast that i mentioned earlier then um, then salt laden sand blown by wind you know some areas having arid cemetery and you know due to wind the the light soils are having salt in it they also get carried out by wind and deposit in some other place and make the soil salinity and if you don't have natural leaching due to topographic situation where that means when the uh, um, water you know from the higher elevation along with the salts deposit at the lower elevation and it gets dried up at that time you know uh, the salt carried out through those water deposit at the soil surface and this, if it, when soil get dried due to high evaporation then salts are deposited um, at the surface at the lower elevation that means especially this happens in arid and semi arid conditions so these are all the causes of accumulation of soluble salts so uh, when you talk about uh, let's talk about the characteristics of salt affected soils salt affected soils means we both saline and alkali and there are two process one is salinization and one is alkalinization in salinization is the process of accumulation of soluble salt at the surface alkalinization is the same as the sodic uh, sodic salts mean accumulation of sodium salts mostly sodium carbon bicarbonate in the soil so in that process it is also called uh, sodic salts or alkali salts so alkalinization and salinization the processes in india we we actually characterized uh, the salt affected soils in two categories one is um, saline soils one another is alkali soils but in general in usda classification there are three classifications there are three classes saline saline sodic and sodic remember i am going to the usda classification now three saline saline sodic and sodic saline means as i mentioned earlier it is salt so when there is salt we ec is greater than 4 ds per meter decimal per meter this is the condition one ph less than 8.5 that is condition of saline salt and exchangeable sodium percentage less than 15 and if it is saline sodic that means salt is there sodium also there in that case salt is there means definitely ec will be greater than 4 ds per meter and ph because of presence of sodium it goes beyond 8.5 and because of sodium its ex exchangeable sodium percentage is greater than 15 so remember third is the sodic i first one saline second one saline sodic third one sodic in sodic salt concentration ec less than 4 and ph greater than 8.5 and exchangeable sodium percentage greater than 15 so if i talk about the indian system of classification we have two categories one is saline soils another is alkali soils in saline soils for us ph is less than 8.2 and for alkali ph is greater than 8.2 and exchangeable sodium percentage for saline soils as usual it is less than 15 it remains the same from the usda classification and alkali salts it get the 15 and ec for saline salts it is greater than 4 ds per meter and it is variable mostly less than 4 ds per meter for alkali salts and most importantly what are the type of salts or soluble salts that you find in saline salts so mostly neutral and mostly chloride sulfate bicarbonate may present but carbonate is absent that i that i mentioned you earlier that sodium chloride is most dominant in saline salt but in alkali 
um, you know, carbonate and bicarbonate of sodium will find this mostly predominant. So you got the two classification, USD and Indian system classification. Now you got the values for them. Three important values, EC, pH and exchange of sodium percentage. Where that is sodic sodium, you remember that you know, pH is higher, as well as of sodium percent greater than 15. So, so I talked about these three types of soil, saline soil, saline alkali, and non or alkali soils. And now, um, I'll go about, you know, you know, in India, uh, what are those areas having most saline or salt affected soils? It is the Gujarat having 2.2 million hectares, that is the maximum area you'll find. And that includes your coastal as well as inland salinity and uh, our salt affected soils but most important thing is the how to reclaim and how to manage these salt affected soils there are many management practices that needs to be followed and uh, to uh, manage these salt affected soils uh, it is important most important is you know uh give some technology for reclaim sodic soils because salt affected saline and sodic i mean to, we have saline and sodic soil or alkali soils. So gypsum technology, using this technology, you know, till the most important, you know, uh, way of reclaiming this alkali soil or sodic soil. This is the most important use of gypsum, calcium sulfate to water. Or second is subsurface drainage technology. That means subsurface drainage is effective way, you know, amelioration waterlogged saline irrigated land in India. And uh, this technology has been widely adopted and mostly because Haryana, Rajasthan, many parts of India yeah, where salt affected soils are. So surf surface drainage is most important. And uh, then third is cultivation of, you know, uh, different uh, species of plant in highly saline soil. The species uh, mostly is, you know, Salvadora parsia. This species of plant grow well in saline black soils, you know, even salinity goes up to you know more than 50 ds per meter but still they yield very well and uh, and most important you know another important is cultivation of you know dill so this is also non-conventional crop like dill also can be grown in this type of uh, soil so the species is an anethum, you know, species, so dill can be grown in this type of, you know, uh, is very much cultivated in this type. It is unconventional, but you can grow. And farmers based on groundwater recharge, then integrated farming system model for salt affected soils. You can have both farming system models comprised of rainwater harvesting structure, fruit trees, papaya, vegetables you know, engineering structures and food crops like banana, Matlab, integrated approaches, means farming system models, they really work well. Means uh, taking both uh, fruits crop, vegetable crop, horticultural crops, then uh, dairy farming, then, you know, integrating all the components of agriculture together and along with the recycling of water, they really work well for this type of soils. So productivity of these type of farming system in salt affected soils really holds good and um, uh, they really improve the productivity and uh, you know uh, it improves the farmers uh, economy status also so the best way i can say you go for individual you know treatments or reclamation processes but integrating all those things you know starting from water harvesting recycling to all those things i mentioned if gypsum requirement or you know subsurface drainage to reduce the salinity to having you know horticultural crops or uh, having engineering structure you know methods of you know land configuration side by side you know having fisheries having um, uh, animals crops you know horticulture all this together really a uh, wonderful opportunity for farmers to improve the productivity this type of salt affected soils which are less productive but due to suitable management intervention you can really increase the productivity of these soils then diversifying the cropping systems also you know intercropping with other crops that's also holds good for this type of and cultivation of forage means for animals you know forage also uh, is important you know some states in india like gujarat they also further um, you know uh, cultivation arable lands and grasslands also very much important you know they gives you know good uh, yield you know milk yield to the animals 
so this also import and you know cultivation of forest grasses in this and uh, and it has been you know other crops like cotton and uh, and most important when it yes, salt appetite is also breeding helps the most important purpose breeding means you have good variety of our cultivars that are salt tolerant and those cultivars really you know whether it's rice or other crops or other um, you know vegetable crops so if you have these things definitely you know uh, it will increase the productivity of those areas and uh, with suitable reclamation or uh, processes along with you know tolerant varieties of different crops then the productivity uh, of those land will increase or improve so uh, there are many tolerant varieties developed and released by indian council of agricultural research particularly csri kernel central soil salinity research institute if i name a few for rice varieties, CSR 10, CSR 13, CSR 23, and then some basmati, you know, CSR 3030, CSR 36. These are for rice varieties. They are very popular and grown all over India. And for wheat, um, it is KRL 1-4, KRL 19 kernel, I mean. So, and chickpea, kernel chana 1, then mustard, Indian mustard, it is CS. 52, CS54, then Dancha, CSD123, and CSD137. So these are all, you know, varieties of different crops. They are salt tolerant. They can be grown, this type of soil. So uh, when you talk about, you know, reclamation and management of salt affected soils, so variety, you know, which crop you are going to cultivate and the variety, tolerant varieties of different crops are they mentioned, rice, wheat, chickpea, mustard, they're also very much important. So we need to know that, you know, along with reclamation procedure, whether you go for subsurface drainage, whether you go for deep sum application, whether you go for leaching of soluble salts through drainage, or whether you go for integrated farming system. But the varieties, these crops play important role improving the productivity of land in these areas, side by side, improving the economic status of farmer. So when you talk about salt affected soils and their management, we ought to remember, first of all, what are those characteristics of salt affected soils and what are those area extent of distribution then what are the management practices we should follow so that we can improve the productivity of land what are those you know reclamation procedure and we should know about that so thank you friend i uh, thank you for watching i hope this small you know section or small video about salt affected soils uh, uh, must have given you enough knowledge uh, about you know the salt affected soils and the reclamation procedure and management to improve productivity so stay safe thank you very much thank you for watching have a great day bye bye